State Representative Dirk Deaton visits the HLGU campus and English professor Amanda Henry holds a book signing for her second published book. Good day everyone and welcome to this edition of Newsbeat. I'm Jace Loebner. We'll get to those stories in just a minute. But first, it's not every day that a World War II ship is docked in downtown Hannibal, but the LST-325 was in Hannibal recently, giving guests a chance to tour the historic ship. Cole Arndorfer has more on that story. Cole? That's right. A historic World War II ship docked in Hannibal's riverfront for four days recently. The docking gave hundreds of visitors the chance to tour the ship, seeing everything from where the sailors slept to the types of supplies they would carry, all in an effort to educate others about the past. Here's more. A historic World War II ship, the LST-325, has been given a new mission. That mission entails educating visitors on the roles of these ships in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Well, we're interested in education, and as you can see behind you are school kids. We're interested in education, education, education. That's Navy veteran and LST-325 crew member Bob Hargrove. Hargrove served 30 years on an LST just like this one. Now, he gets to teach people about its history. He says the ship was instrumental in World War II. Yeah, without these ships, we'd be speaking German today. That's why it's important. The docking gave hundreds of people the chance to tour the only fully functioning tank landing ship surviving from World War II. There are many museum ships around the, around the United States, but they don't work. This is an operating ship. Hargrove says the ship's origin is also unique because it was constructed entirely by female workers. These ships were put together by women welders. Uh, and Evansville made 157 of these ships. For the D-Day invasion, Hargrove says the ship did 44 trips through the English Channel. The ship moved troops and supplies back and forth. It also transported wounded soldiers and German prisoners of war. Visitors like Dave and Carol Frank believe that touring the ship is one way to honor the men who served. I think it's very important, especially for younger people, because the greatest generation is almost gone. And this is a reminder of that generation and the sacrifices they made. The tour on the ship is entirely self-guided. Crew members say that tours are set up this way to encourage visitors to read about the locations on the tour. The LST-325's home port is in Evansville, Indiana. For more information about the ship or information on tours, go to lstmemorial.org. Reporting in Hannibal for Newsbeat, I'm Cole Arndorfer. Jace, back to you. Thanks, Cole. In other news, Missouri House Representative Dirk Deaton was on campus recently as part of a Constitution Day event. This Constitution Day event is in partnership with the Mormon Foundation as part of the Free Society Speaker Series at HLGU. During his speech, Deaton posed the question of, is the Constitution a living document? Deaton gave different resources and encouraged students to think critically about that question. Deaton earned his undergraduate degree in interdisciplinary studies at Liberty University. He also attended Crowder College and Missouri Southern State University. Before he was a representative, he worked for a small Southwest Missouri manufacturer. Students from Hannibal LaGrange University, Southwest Baptist University, and Missouri Baptist University attended the Pathway Conference in Jefferson City. Each year, the Baptist newspaper, The Pathway, has a conference that features several speakers discussing the connection between the Christian faith and media. Students and freelance writers gathered for this two-day event. One of the speakers at the event was Lee Pitts, the executive director of the World Journalism Institute. Throughout Pitts' two sessions, he discussed his experiences as a former embedded journalist and how each of those events molded his current perspective of media. Pitts explains that he wants his audience to understand how journalism can be used for good. As a journalist, you are a community builder, not a community destroyer. And a lot of people think journalists are the ones who you know, tear down the community and tear down um, you know, the public square. But I would argue that journalism done the way it's intended, you, you build community. Pitts also says that his Christian faith plays a big role in how he views journalism. We like to cover um, ordinary people doing extraordinary things because um, the Bible is full of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And I think that kind of having, having that sense of how all of our stories can kind of echo the story is a cool way, I think, to ap approach journalism. Pitts says he enjoys devoting his life to telling the stories of others and wants to inspire young journalists to do the same. English professor Amanda Henry held a book signing on campus to celebrate her newly published book, The Light of the White Gem. 
This is Henry's second book from her series called The Tokens of Reiner. The series is a trilogy, and Henry has plans to release the third book next year. The event featured a reading from the book and a chance to get the book signed by Henry. If you would like to order the book, copies are available on Amazon or through the publisher, West Bow Press. For more information, you can check out Miss Henry's website at sharingtokens.com. Turning from English to math, Hannibal LaGrange University welcomes a new addition to the math department. Mrs. Casey Woodmancy is excited to take on her role as a math instructor. Woodmancy says her primary objective in the classroom is to have what she teaches be applicable to students in their daily lives. Woodmancy realizes not everything she teaches will apply to every student, but her goal is to be as honest as possible on what may and what may not apply in the real world. Woodmancy says she also has some advice on how to be successful in college. To be successful in college, you need to give the instructor what they want when they ask for it. And it's super basic, um, but as long as you give the instructor what they want when they ask for it, then you'll be successful. And I would add to that, uh, go to office hours, get to know your teachers. This semester, Woodman C is teaching calculus, college algebra, basic algebra, and elementary statistics. If you have a question or need help with the class, Woodman C's office is located in the Carroll Science Building. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Until next time, I'm Jace Loebner.